All right, folks, time for me to do my uh, quick and dirty review of Pixels, which is the latest film from Adam Sandler. And before we even get into what the film is about, I need to preface with my thoughts on uh, Mr. Sandler himself. Uh, I've never really been a big fan of his movies, but I don't think he's the Antichrist either. I mean, he's made some really bad movies over the years, uh, but I really haven't seen much of them. I mean, I hear Jack and Jill and Blended and all that. It's terrible. But, you know, I, frankly, I, I never actually got around to watching them. Didn't really have much of, a, of an incentive to watch them. But, uh, you know, I, I don't really hate his guts the way a lot of people do. Not that I'm a fan. You know, even when I was a kid, I thought, you know, The Waterboy and Billy Madison were just really juvenile and just kind of, you know, mediocre paint-by-numbers formula industry films. But, like I said, I don't hate the guy. I don't have a vendetta the way I think a lot of people do. So anytime you have an Adam Sandler movie coming, anytime you have a Happy Madison production, you know, there's going to be a large contingent of people out there that are just going to absolutely just, you know, hate it and try to disembowel it, you know, before they even actually see it. So I'm not one of those types. That said, Pixels is a very, very, very disappointing movie. Uh, I'm a huge old school video game fan, obviously. And, uh, you know, watching this movie, I just feel like it was just so much squandered potential. I mean, there is some... Uh, capacity there for I thought what could have been a really really great popcorn movie but you know with the, the Ghostbusters meets the last Starfighter premise you know it just plays out way too much like your standard typical uh, Happy Madison production to really kind of go out with its own distinct identity and that really hurts it because like I said this could have been a great movie and uh beginning with the premise okay so it's the 1980s and NASA and there's a came by Dan Aykroyd uh, NASA's filming like this arcade competition, and you see young Adam Sandler and all his friends, and uh, uh, the guy from Game of Thrones, Peter Dinklage, he's playing like this really cocky Billy Mitchell analog, and uh, so anyway, NASA records it, they send it off into space, and you know, 30 years later, uh, a bunch of aliens find the message and think it's like a beckon for war, so they attack us by sending out a bunch of uh, 3D pixelated video game villains from circa 1982. Now, I don't want to sound like too much of a nerd here, but if the video cassette they received was from 1982, then how come we're seeing video game characters that were released in video games made after 1982? Like Paperboy, I'm pretty sure it was after 1982. Uh, Duck Hunt, for sure, I think was after 1982. So, I mean, we're seeing a bunch of things that, uh, know, uh, anachronistically shouldn't be in the film, but like I said, don't want to be a nerd, don't be a stickler for details, but it's something kind of bothered me as a retro game purist. So anyway, another thing about the film, another big gaping plot hole, they never really explain why the aliens are using this pixelated technology instead of traditional weapons. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. They're just really convoluted plot line about the aliens disguising themselves as you know, 1980s celebrities. Like, there, there's a Hall and Oates cameo of sorts going on here. There's an appearance by Max Headroom of all things. I mean, it's just really... I mean, if you're not a product of the 80s, if you're like a five-year-old kid watching this movie, you are going to be confused beyond words. So that's a pretty big misstep there. Uh, moving along, as far as the film is concerned, I mean, the cast is okay. Uh, outside of Sandler, you got... Uh, who else? Oh, you got Kevin James playing the President of the United States for some reason. Uh, he's really good at the claw game. That's really his only big uh, ad for the film, I guess. Uh, you got some woman, I forget her name, she's a love interest. She's a stereotypical Adam Sandler movie love interest, where she's a bombshell, and she's completely out of Sandler's league, and she starts off with hating his guts, but somehow she completely falls in love with him. I mean, tried and true, seen a million times. Nothing really deviated from the last 24 Sandler movies. Uh, you got Josh Gad, who's playing like this conspiracy theorist guy who uncovers the alien plot. Um, as far as the rest of the cast, I mean, not really much to talk about. I don't really know who they are, to be honest. So, uh, your, your mileage will vary there. Um, as far as the rest of the movie, though, the plot line. So, yeah, getting back to it. Sorry, I got, got distracted there. So the aliens attack in the U.S. Army. There's like a Galaga strike in Guam. Special effects are pretty bad, actually. Uh, but it gets better. There's a, a centipede confrontation in Hyde Park, which actually is pretty cool. Probably the highlight of the movie. 
I actually take it back. The Pac-Man battle in New York uh, is actually the best in the entire movie. Uh, you know, there's a big denouement, the big apocalypse porn finale, where you have, you know, the guys from Joust and the guy from Burger Time showing up, and a bunch of, like, nine licensed characters show up. I mean, there's like ninjas and, like, the freak ninjas for some reason. Uh, they come in and they attack Washington, D.C., and there's a big Donkey Kong battle finale. So I thought that was pretty entertaining. Uh, not the best in the world, but, you know, it is entertaining while it lasts. The problem with this movie is you do have some pretty entertaining popcorn scenes, but it's the scenes in between. Like, there's like a 20 minute stretch of absolutely nothing going on in the movie between uh, the Pac Man chasing New York and the big um, uh, everybody attacking DC finale. So, I mean, it's kind of stuck with just a long stretch of you know, absolutely boring blank film space. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of side plots there going on about Billy Mitchell's, uh, not Billy Mitchell, about uh, Peter Dinklage's Billy Mitchell-inspired character wanting to have uh, an illicit affair with Serena Williams and Martha Stewart. I mean, it's just really random. You know, not really my top of humor. Uh, it's not a very funny movie. I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, I didn't really laugh at all during it. I mean, I enjoyed some of the references. And, you know, there were some, some good special effects moments. But you know, the fact of the matter, this film was directed by Chris Columbus, the guy who did Home Alone, the first couple of Harry Potter movies. You know, he was an executive producer on The Goonies and Gremlins, so he's a dude who definitely knows how to do special effects and event films. But this movie, I mean, it's just really sort of disappointing. I mean, it doesn't look like there's potential at all. I mean, there could have been some really, really great things going on here, but a lot of it really came to it. And like I said, the problem is, instead of being its own movie, it's basically a uh, standard Adam Sandler film sort of shoehorned into the video game attacks nostalgia filter, and it just doesn't work at all. So I, this has got to be probably the biggest disappointment of the summer for me as far as films go. I mean, I didn't really have sky-high expectations, but you know, it really could have been a whole lot better, and it should have been a whole lot better. So, I mean, even if you're a hardcore video game fan like me, I really didn't like it. So, uh, you really can't say you're missing much of anything. Go see Minions. Uh, go see uh, Inside Out. Those are way better movies. we got a lot of great stuff coming out later. we got uh, The Look of Silence. A lot of really great art house films. Smile starting to come out after uh, the deluge of Jurassic Worlds and all that stuff. So, keep an eye out. You know, the Pixels, as bad as it is, it may in fact be a harbinger that we actually do have some legitimately great films, mainstream, independent, and foreign, coming out shortly. So, end of the day, Pixels, not a big fan, squatter potential. Just go see Wreck-It Ralph again, you'll be a lot happier.